Here in the UK, we are sport for choice with a good selection of air museums. From small locally organised collections to large complexes housing a hundred or more aircraft. I'm here today at Hendon Air Museum, one of the best air museums along with the Cosford Air Museum. And what better way to start it than being right outside near a Spitfire. Located within the district of Collendale in North London, this air museum is one of two official Royal Air Force museums. The airfield at Hendon was established just before the start of World War I and was the location of many firsts in UK aviation. During the First World War, the airfield was used to train pilots and also to provide aerial defence of the City of London. By the Second World War, Hendon was used more for transport purposes rather than a frontline airbase, and by the 1950s, the runway was deemed to be no longer suitable for the new jet aircraft then entering service. With some original pre-World War II buildings on the airfield, Hendon was set up as an air museum, and now contains over 100 aircraft. The entrance to the museum leads on to the first hangar, which is designed to provide a snapshot of a century of Royal Air Force history. Among the main exhibits are a Westland Sea King helicopter and a short Sunderland four-engine flying boat. Under normal situations, the Sunderland is accessible to visitors. However, it was closed on this occasion as it's still the time of Covid. The hangar has recently been renovated in 2018, as the last time I visited, the hangar was home to the Battle of Britain display. Moving on from the large glazed hangar, the next display looks at aviation during the First World War. Within just over 10 years from the first powered flight performed by an aircraft, they were being used on the front lines by both sides during the Great War in an increasing number of roles. This hangar shows the rapid progress of how aircraft would develop from general spotter planes at the start of the war to dedicated fighters and bombers. The majority of the exhibits are war planes used by the Royal Flying Corps, however there are also two German fighters in the form of an Albatross D5 and a Fokker D7 the latter complete with a garish lozenge colour scheme. The next group of hangars are all amalgamated within a large display hall built in the 1970s. The collection hosts a large number of important aircraft that serve the Royal Air Force, from the silver painted biplanes of the interwar years, to the supersonic fighters of the 80s and 90s such as the McDonnell Douglas F-4 Phantom and the Panavia Tornado F-3. Many of the aircraft displayed are the only examples of the type to be found in the UK, including the Bristol Beaufort Torpedo Bomber, Lockheed Hudson Patrol Aircraft and Supermarine Stranra Flying Boat. As the Battle of Britain had its 80th anniversary around the time this video was filmed, a group of aircraft that fought from both sides in this legendary air campaign have been assembled. Representing the Axis powers is a fearsome Messerschmitt Bf 109 and the Italian Air Force's Fiat CR-42 Falco biplane. Providing air defence against these were the RAF's main fighters, which included the Supermarine Spitfire and the Hawker Hurricane. One corner of the display hall is occupied by numerous helicopters, the most notable of these being a red and blue painted Westland Wessex, which served as the Queen's transport. Other types of helicopters on display here include the civilian version of the Augusta Westland AW101 Merlin, the Bristol Belvedere and the Westland Whirlwind. The transition from propeller driven to jet aircraft in the immediate post-war period can also be seen on the opposite side of the hangar. 
Aircraft such as the Hawker Tempest soon gave way to their jet-powered Gloucester Meteor and BAC Canberra, with one of the most iconic post-war fighters to serve the Royal Air Force being an example of the English Electric Lightning. If the aircraft from the previous hall looked big, Hangar 5 is where Hendon's largest exhibits can be found. Among the most famous residents is the unrestored wreck of a Handley Page Halifax, which was recovered from a Norwegian lake in 1973. Although very few of these aircraft survive intact to this day, the decision was made to display the aircraft so that it appears as it was discovered. The airframe has been treated to prevent further corrosion, and although some argue it should be fully restored, the display is a dramatic reminder that not all aircraft made it back to base. Fortunately, it does share the hangar with a complete example of the most famous of all British heavy bombers of World War II, the Avro Lancaster. This aircraft is none other than a 467 Squadron coded POS which was one of only 35 Lancasters to complete over 100 sorties during the war. As well as the heavy bombers, the hall also contains examples of the RAF's bomber force at the outbreak of the Second World War, with a Bristol Blenny Mark IV and a fairy battle. American heavy bombers are also represented in the shape of an ex-Indian Air Force consolidated B-24 Liberator, and the unmistakable Boeing B-17 Flying Fortress. Against these Allied aircraft, the museum holds a small number of Luftwaffe aircraft, including the infamous Junkers Ju-87 Stuka, the Messerschmitt Bf-110 Nightfighter, and the unusual Heinkel HG-162 Salamander. One corner of the museum hangar is entirely occupied by the Avro Vulcan bomber, which is so big that it is very difficult to get a proper photo of it. The bomb bay is displayed open so visitors can take a look inside as they pass underneath the massive delta-shaped wings. The last hangar focuses on more recent events that have shaped military aviation in the last four decades. This hangar goes back to having a number of aircraft displayed as if they are flying on overhead, which also means more can be packed in. Here the more recent defenders of UK airspace can be viewed, many of which only left service in the 21st century, and mostly only because of budget cuts. The crowd-pleasing Harrier GR9 had only left service in 2010, and the multi-role Panavia Tornado saw the last of its kind leave the RAF in 2019. One of the aircraft that replaced these is the Eurofighter Typhoon, and an example of the test prototype can be seen overhead. I did notice that somebody had modified the nose art on the Gulf War Buccaneer however, and it wasn't a Saudi's. Being one of the largest air museums in the UK and holding a vast collection of important aircraft from the Royal Air Force's history, this museum should not be missed by an aviation fan. It had recently been revamped and it is clear that it had been made to be more interactive for families. Some of the exhibits I had remembered from previous times have now been moved on to new locations, however many of these aircraft have remained where they were since when the museum first opened its doors. If you have enjoyed this video then please consider leaving a like and following my channel for more. I have many more air museums from around the world and other historical places of interest. So until next time, see you around.